I'm Mel Stewart, and this is Swim Swam Podcast. Today, we are unpacking a very big event in Atlanta, Georgia, December 13th through the 16th, the International Age Group Championships. That's this December 13th through the 16th of 2023 this year. Helping me understand this event, the how and why you should participate. We have 12-time Olympic medalist Ryan Lochte, and we have the icon of icons in Olympic coaching, whose resume is probably way too long to share in this brief intro, Coach Mark Schubert. And we the have- The legend. The legend. And we have Doug, we have Doug Fogg. <laughs> we, get the, we get the CEO of ISCA here. Doug, Doug parachuted in. He's going to tell us what's what. Thanks for being on, guys. kick this off um i got some good news and bad news um i'm gonna start with the bad because i always like ending positive um so uh, me and my team doug included um we wanted to make this swim meet something never been done before unheard of and our expectations are very high and what we want to accomplish in this swim meet. So for to get everything situated and especially because Olympic year is coming up, um, we are postponing the swim meet till after the Olympics. Um, so that other countries um, can get, they're focusing more on their kids going to the Olympics and stuff. So then they can, after the Olympics, they can start focusing on their age groupers um, going to the um, IAGC. So that is the bad news. But the good news is it gives us more time to make this unbelievable. In, in terms in terms of the postponement, we were you were you were coming up at the you know right before the holidays in December of 2023. Is it is it going to be positioned uh, at the same time roughly in 2024? Yes. Yes. We actually have talked to Georgia Tech as late as yesterday about just taking the dates and moving them one year ahead. And uh, it's something that everyone should know is that this is at the, the Georgia Tech, the site of the 1996 Olympic Games. This is an event that's going to be swum 25 meters yes. instead of yep. 25 yards, which is something that's always been uh, that's bothered me. I've always felt we should be at 25 meters just to, to sync with the rest of the world. Um, yeah, but. Before we move any further, I'd, I would like to just uh, I'd like to get a perspective because we're in a unique moment right now in, in swimming history. Um, recently, Swim Swim reported that revenue for USC Swimming is down 25 percent. Registration is down 9.2 percent um, from our high in 2017. And I, I really want to hear from Mark Schubert. I want some age, wisdom and perspective. A man who's been has been watching this very closely. Um, it feels like to me. I can tell you, I'll say this. It feels like I've gotten a lot of feedback. It doesn't feel like it. it's true. There have been times when I've had to turn my phone off. And the feedback I've gotten is from coaches. And the coaches feel stressed and strained. And they feel like they're underserved by the governing body. And uh, they're looking for leadership, support, and some creativity. This feels like one of many different ways to be creative and service age group swimmers and families. Mark, you know, I, th that's a very broad statement. Do you care to comment on that? Absolutely. Uh, I think it is leadership, um, not only from the staff, but also from the board. I think the board allows the staff to do everything. And I think the board could provide more leadership in that area. But there are so many things we could be doing right now, which would not only help the coffers of USA Swimming, but more importantly, would help our programs, our clubs to thrive and grow. It's um, I, I, I think that uh, the feedback I've gotten from coaches is that they're um, they they state the obvious, which is that they're on deck, they're working, they're the ones who are the front lines. And the sport, in many ways, we say it: the sport rests on the on the shoulders of moms and dads, and that's a really great marketing line. And it's true, but it rests on the shoulders of coaches. 
And I've never heard um, I've never heard this much grievance from from the coaching community. And it, and frankly, as somebody who I'm 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 a, I've been watching this closely since the 1980s, it alarmed me a little bit because it, it got very very loud. As recently at the World Clinic, at, you know, Ask is World Clinic in Dallas, and um, it was conversation after conversation on this topic. It's um, it, it I'm I'm just kind of curious. This event feels like something that should come out of a governing body. The International Age Group Championships feels like it's an event that should be brainchild and 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 a lot of a lot of resources thrown at it. Um, why why, ha why hasn't it been? I'll comment on that. I I would really rather it stay with the International Coaches Association. I think the creativity that's come from Doug. And the support that's come from Ryan is awesome. And too many times, what we get from the governing body is the same old, same old. And Aerosmith had a quote in one of their songs, if you keep doing what you've always done, you keep getting what you've always got. And I don't think you know, right now that's positive. Doug, Doug, can you add to that? Well, see, I think another thing, Mel, um, I got out of coaching in um, 21 after 53 years. And and I can name, I can name 20, 20 youth activities uh, that have started since I started coaching, okay? And swimming is the only sport left of all the sports out there that use birth year as a reason to change age group. And then U.S. swimming has has I think 87% of their teams are 100 swimmers or less. The mathematics of keeping four 11 and 12 boys or four 13 and 14 girls together throughout a year is impossibility. The mathematics just don't, don't add up. Um, all other sports have major youth tournaments. I mean, you know, you can say you dislike the AAU, but I mean, baseball has it. AAU, everybody has tournaments for young kids that keeps them striving <clears throat> to go forward. Swimming wants to keep the young kids down on the farm, you know, and, and just deal with the elite. And because we have so many great coaches in the U S at the club level, they they can hand pick, you know, great kids out of those clubs and just move them, but they don't really put the emphasis on what age group swimming is. Hey, we should get, we should go, like FINA and everybody else in the world and go to birth year versus birth date. Um, we should go to 25 meter more often and 50 meter more often uh, to compete with the rest of the world. And um, I just think those are two major, two major elements. There's not great events for young kids. It's the same events over and over again. This is something new and, and exciting. And um, we hold a single age group meet in Florida every spring and we get 1600 kids down there and the coaches come and say they get their best times after wearing all winter because they're swimming against, they feel the same age kids, you know, like they're not, not 11 and 12 year old. And I can't beat that 12 year old, you know, they're, they're they have to stand up and go against their own. And I think there's a reason why FINA's done it. And I, I think we ought to, you know, do the same thing within the U.S. Our numbers are going down. The sport, is, the sport is is shrinking, and we don't want that to happen. We're not going to find the Ryan Lockies and people like that if if we lose them to other activities. For anyone and out there, for anyone out there listening, uh, USA Swimming is is a part of uh, it's under the umbrella. It's a signatory of USA, the US, the USOPC, and their yeah. charge is to prep. Team USA with an Olympic team and get them ready to go. And a lot of people in the community feel like maybe having this focus takes the attention away from age group swimmers. Doug, are your meets swum, these, the meets that you're talking about, are they swum USA swimming or are they swum AAU? There's some, well, they're, they're swum independent. Okay. So in other words, if you're a USA swimmer, you can come. If you're an AAU swimmer, you're come. If you're a boys and girls club swimmer, you can come. We have our own insurance. And then if you're a USA swimmer, your times go into the USA swimming time bank. It sounds like you're, you service everybody. So you take the, the trouble and the management and the time to, to make everybody welcome. Is that correct? 
Correct. And Ryan comes and gives the little kids a clinic and, and they think they've died and went to heaven. <laughs> it's, it's, it's as as we as we stand right now there there's um for the first time i you know i've been around for a long time i swam aau in the 1970s and and then into the you know we we flipped and i thought that i was swimming usa swimming in 79 and onward and i talked to a coach and that coach told me he said no you swam ymca you didn't swim usa swimming until 1983 when you started going to regionals and then junior national championships which was a big surprise to me for the first time in, in, in that's many, many decades uh, coaches have signed up athletes, AAU. We know because they're calling us up and saying, uh, you know, we've signed up 1,550 swimmers, AAU. Um, another club, we've signed up 1,220 swimmers, AAU, which is that's never happened before. Um, why is that happening? Mark or Doug? I think I think it's happening because number one, it's cheaper. The insurance is just as good. And in some cases, well, in all cases, you get more individuality and the clubs can be involved when they run meets uh, and provide different things and not have quite as many restrictions. I'd like to hear what Doug has to say if he agrees with that. Well, I agree 100 percent in that. But what what I think what we could do is offer is we could go to one of the major carriers of insurance because what most people are doing is picking it up to cover their kids that are not going to USA Meet. You know, maybe they're learning to swim schools and stuff like that. And we could find an insurance policy that even be a lot cheaper because I don't think the majority, and Mal, you've talked to some of these coaches. I don't think the majority of these coaches are putting their kids in AAU meets. They're doing it, they're doing it more or less for the insurance purpose. Is that correct? That's the feedback I've gotten. And my my understanding is that uh that was that was the direct response. And uh, but it was there was a this caveat added to it, which is AAU meets are 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 coming. And um, so that's that's what I'm hearing uh, on on my side of the fence. In, in, in terms of just, just bringing this back to the topic of uh, the International Age Group Championships, um, this is an event that, you know, as if, if I was a kid, USA Swimming or AAU back when I was a, an age grouper, um, I would have been over the moon to participate in something like this. My whole ego and existence and self-worth and identity would have been wrapped up in, event, in an event like this. And, uh, and I think it... Um, participation in something like this changes kids and it changes families is is yeah. that is that part of what you think about when you're when you're coming up with something like this absolutely i think you hit the nail yeah 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 i mean you know competition breeds competition and i think the u.s is falling behind the rest of the world is competing against each other we're competing against the u.s that's it uh, we're falling behind, and that's why we, we created this meet. And these kids are going to get this atmosphere of almost the Olympic Games. Like, they're going to have, like, um, a, like an almost Olympic village where they can go to the cafeteria, things like that. So they And then you have, like, the best of the best in their age groups um, competing against each other. So they get that atmosphere. But then I'm going to have Ryan Lochte flair, of course where it's going to be fun because that's how I swam for so long is because I was having fun. And I want to bring to this, to the kids being like, swimming is just a sport. It's not your life. You can do what you can be the best of the best, just have fun doing it. And I want to get the U S people a chance to compare themselves against the rest of the world at such a young age and having this hard atmosphere competition but at the same time, making it fun. So like when they do make the Olympic team, when they do go to the Olympics, they're not nervous. They've already went through this. They already did this big swim meet. They've already um, went to like almost the Olympics just at a younger age. So um, we're just trying to do whatever we can to help the younger generation. If, if, I'm, possible. if, if I'm if I'm a, if I'm a parent or I'm a coach or I'm a kid. And I, I'm, I watch the Olympic Games in Paris next summer, and I'm excited. Um, 
You know, I'd be really excited to to roll up on this meet December of 2024 after watching the Olympics uh, to see Ryan Lochte, a 12-time Olympic medalist. So the question is, are you going to be there on on site? Are you going to do a clinic? Are you going to are you, what, what is your involvement uh, and you know on on at the event? I think so he's going like, to swim. I'm basically, I think he's going to swim as a 13 year old, right, Ryan? <laughs> yeah. I just got to dye my hair. There you go. <laughs> so, so uh, Ryan, sorry. Oh, sorry. No, I'm going to do everything. Oh no, I'm going to do everything. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be going in the stands, talking to the parents, talking to the kids, going around. Cause this is, this is going to be like my domain. I'm going to be hanging out with kids. I'm a big kid myself. So like, I'm just going to be loving life, making sure that all these kids are having the time of their life. But when it's time to get up on those blocks and race, it's time to race. Um, But yeah, I'll do swim clinics. I'll do everything. I'll do speeches. I'll do anything, anything to help. So as a part of the international age group championships, if you're out there and you're listening, the Ryan Lochte experience is going to be, it's it's going to be turned on and and he will be interfacing. And if you've ever been to a Ryan Lochte event, that uh, it's just a clinic. Um, I would say that he's, he's coming in at a 99 percentile compared to most of his Olympic peers. He knows how to interface hey, you know with what? the kids. I might, I might for this meet, I might even call out Michael Phelps and have a little race with him. <laughs> I, I I would like to see that. I would like to. I would. <laughs> I think I would like to. I would like for you to make that announcement today. Oh that man, I gotta, I gotta. That start would fill up the then. stands twice. <laughs> well, we we should know. We should note this. We're you know we're we're past our our icon days of Michael Phelps and Ryan Lochte. However, uh, of of the two, only one still has a world record on the books. Uh, a one fifty four flat 200 meter I am and uh and kudos to you Ryan for for staying in the record books uh thank, but thank I, you. I think you might be in danger this you know at, at uh with uh Leon Marchand oh yeah I mean he's he's got it all um and you know what I hope he breaks because you know what records are meant to be broken that's what that's what the sport is all about like breaking records getting your best time and the reason, and some of the reasons that I do swim clinics all over is, this is gonna sound crazy. I want one of those kids that, like, I've touched upon, that, like, I've taught something to break my world record. I want that to happen. I want them to break my world record. And I tell this to every swim clinic I go to. I was like, if you break my world record, I promise you, I will fly to your house, and we'll eat a large pizza together. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm I'm going to I'm going to suit back up. I want a pizza with Ryan Lochte. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so let, let me let me just uh, let's 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 bring it back to this current events real fast. Um, Mark, I, I'm pretty sure you were up for a board seat and um, and, it, and it didn't it didn't come to pass. But when I saw that, I was like, OK, we got some we got some perspective from a guy who's who's contributed a whole lot to the sport. You didn't get it. How do you, how do you feel about about how that how that shook out? Well, first of all, they have a nomination process, and the nominating committee did not recommend me nor Mary T. Maher. So we were a little bit behind right away, and neither of us got elected. Uh, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to run again. Uh, I don't know what the problem was, but uh, I'm going to try to do a better job of running. I did have two platforms, like you mentioned. You know, the membership is down. We need to come up with creative ways to increase it. And here's an interesting thing regarding the world championships in Australia. I did a, a survey after the world championship of Australian coaches and Bud McAllister, who coached in Australia for many years. The take was Australian coaches are better trained, better educated. They put more pressure on their athletes, and every day they talk about beating the USA. I don't think we have that. And we better start having it, or we're going to be in a miserable second place. Um, no, I appreciate that, and that makes sense. And I'm philosophically, I'm, I'm on, I'm with you. 
I just want to bring our listeners' attention back to the fact that Mary T also ran and Mary T did not make the board. Mary T Maher, Madam Butterfly. Um, I appreciate you bringing that up. That, that's that's very surprising probably to a lot of people. And um, in, in, in terms of... In, in, in terms of... I think the thing is, to just to add to that, I think people don't want to hear from the old guard but that's when the best swimming was going on in the world. But I don't think they want to hear from it because they think this new, whatever it is, is the best thing out there. And I think, I think like Mark would say, work smart works, you know? Um, and I, I just believe that the old guards got a lot to say. I know after making 10,000 mistakes, I know more, more, more things than I did before I made 10,000 mistakes. <laughs> No, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate you saying that. I'm I'm in agreement. The as I stand here talking to you, everyone, I'm 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 staring at 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 a 12 time Olympic medalist Ryan Ryan Lochte. And the truth is, the value of 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 Ryan's experience, the value of my personal experience, which was tiny compared to his, is that um, it, it it's it's this moment in time and a piece of history and a sport that you love, but if your sport starts to contract and we we stop growing it's it's um it loses some of its shine and uh and mm -hmm. and to, to sit here and say that i'm not a little bit alarmed is um that would well, pisses me off yeah you should be pissed off it makes me mad like i have so much love and passion for this sport like it's it got me to where i'm at right now in my life um it's done wonders for me and to know that People are like dropping out like that. That's why I'm still here and I'm going to spice things up. No, we, we love you spicing <laughs> it. We love you spicing everything up. Um, we're going to be back. Ryan, you're going to, you're going to be come back on several times. And I, I would love to have Mark and Doug back on uh, to talk about this event as we get closer. Um, I've, I've held you for 30 minutes. I just, I just, before, before we take off, if there's just anything that would be constructive, if we wanted to have a message to the base, because it's a, um, it, se it seems like, it seems like leadership and direction matter. And uh, international age group championships is, is simply one thing of an, a multitude of things that can be done. If I'm a coach and I'm listening right now, and this question is for Mark or Doug, um, What's something that I can do to make a difference now and 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 going into the next quad? Well, one thing is talk about this competition, especially with the eleven year olds, the thirteen year olds, the fifteen year olds that are going to be able to compete with the other swimmers of their age. And I think that's going to be motivating. I think that's going to get them onto the junior nationals and the senior nationals, and then hopefully the Olympic trials. Like was said by Ryan, you're going to go to a major international competition and get experience that you're not going to get anyplace else at that age. This is a creative event. As I'm aware that there's some companies stepping up and supporting this event. They've 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 come on early. I, um, I've I've uh, a friend and a peer, uh, Dave McCax, 1978 world champion in the hunter free at, you know, with, with the company GMX seven, he's, um, he, he is, he's your number one ambassador. He's a ground game out there talking about this event. Is there anybody else that we could mention that that's, that's been a big contributor to making this happen? Well, I think the main person is a guy that swam at the university of Wisconsin, Brian Wilson. Um, he pretty much put up the capital for us to get it to get it started, you know, uh, to get things going, and I think uh, he deserves a big because he was a guy that said, "Hey, I'll back it." You know, we can sit here and come up with a lot of ideas, but it takes somebody sometimes with some money to do it. And he put his money out there and said, "I'm willing to do it." He's a he's done very well in the stock market, and, and on top of that, he probably loves swimming as much as Ryan. I mean, he's a you know he's an adult swimming guy you know uh he might fly to philadelphia this weekend because i told mark was gonna be out there and he said you think we can do lunch with mark you know i mean he's like he's a guy that loves the sport and we need more we need more people like that to get involved to you know to make swimming better for the u.s i mean i really really think we got to come up with some bold changes 
if we're going to compete. A lot of people will say that they love swimming and they love the swimming family, but it's um, it's it's wholly different when when someone says I love it and here I'm going to part with cash or make an investment, yeah. and the that's a different set of, of of folks, but they do exist, and Brian's one of them. And and, and before we before we push off, it's just I, I I did want to give you this platform just to say if there if there's something else that that it can be done, this is we we've got this event. It's on the books. We're coming up December 2024. And if you're out there and you're curious about it, you can press pause right now. You should go to their website. I'm right. going to give you the I'm going to put the URL in the in the show notes. But it's iagc.swim isca.org that's iagc.swim isca.org go over there check it out peruse the site save it to your desktop get ready for next year yeah. but any parting thoughts before we take off now we thank you so much for supporting it because you're a big voice in the community and i think with your support mm -hmm. it helps us ryan yes thank you <clears throat> Mark, I know and you got something. To everyone say. out there, sign up. <laughs> yeah, I think the main thing is shoot for this next year. Um, and I think uh, Doug's probably going to get the qualifying times out there. Shoot for those times. Look forward to swimming at Georgia Tech. And I only have one more thing to say. And I'm going to say this to Doug Fonder, who I love dearly. But an old Chinese saying was, Man who wear cap backwards often going in wrong direction. And I told you that's because I hang out with you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mel. We're going to cut it right there. That was funny. That was exactly the clothes we need. You guys should have your own television show. I appreciate you dropping in. We're going to, we, the, the thing to do is just to, con is to continue to talk about this. It'll, you know, as yeah. we hear it, it'll gel. And uh, typically, you know, it's like, my thing is you've got to say it 10 times before someone goes, what is this event? You're sick of talking about it. And by, by the time you get to that point, they're like, they're ready to sign up. So we'll, we'll come back and discuss it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, right, thank you. Guys. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.